I'm here with uh, Masada Yu, having just personally completed Mag 40. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> definitely a uh, unique, exhilarating, and, uh, and tough experience. Yeah, we did about 42 hours in four days, not counting you guys on work or something. Yeah. Uh, and it, uh, it was it was everything I expected and, and more. Good so, to hear. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, and uh, I, I thank you for taking the time to, to just uh, talk about a, a couple questions that I've had on sure. my mind. That uh, if I ever get a chance to sit down with the master, I'd like to, to pick his brain on. Um, master? <laughs> he said uh, he was here. I Jeff Cooper. Here. <laughs> um, one of the questions I have is you know you, there's. There's debate always batted around. Some of it is very informal, some of it's very uninformed um, on the um, notify officer situation for concealed permit holders, um, particularly if there's a traffic stop situation or if there's another uh, business engagement with, uh, with officers. And, and I have my personal philosophy, and I know the law varies state to state. Many laws have a must notify upon initial contact, and, and some states have you do not have to notify. My personal philosophy is, you can't go wrong if you always notify. It's sort of like always telling the truth. You don't have to try and remember which lie you told, and that's that's my personal philosophy. But one of the one of the aspects I've thought about is that I've never really seen discussed is what if you are in a position where, say, there's a traffic stop, and I'm the passenger of the vehicle, and I'm carrying legally with my permit what if you know do I what obligation if any may I or may I not have or or in the absence of a legal obligation what what might be the best practice what might be the, the common advice subtly <clears throat> subtly two different questions mm -hmm. we're doing this interview here in Michigan where for many many years it's been mandatory when you're having an enforcement contact or an official contact with the officer to notify him if you're armed. When you are the passenger in the vehicle, you are in contact with the officer. Uh, you got folks that say, well, wait, it was only the driver that was stuck. Right. Um, let's look at it. Now, first, I don't give legal advice. I give practical advice. So let's look at it practically. You and your buddy are in the car. You're in the shotgun seat, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. He's in the driver's seat. You're going 25 to 70 miles an hour, or possibly more than that, which might be why you've been pulled over, <laughs> right. but I digress. You were moving. The vehicle came to a stop. You, the passenger, are no longer going 70 miles an hour. You are stopped. You have been stopped. Right, right. You are in contact, literally reaching across the front seat if you lean within mm -hmm. touching distance of the officer. And many officers will actually approach from the passenger side of the vehicle, on a, especially on a busy highway. Especially the smart ones. Right. But I digress. Right. Which means, however you want to interpret it, you're in contact with the officer. The way I read it, and again, I'm not giving legal advice here, is that everybody in the vehicle who is armed should notify the officer. If the two of you, or your friends in the back seat, or your other friends all the way back in the van and the bus on the way to the IDPA match, right. sing out a chorus, we've all got <laughs> guns, this will probably go downhill. So the logical thing would be, if you're riding with a friend who carries, and you both know that you carry, it's up to the driver when he or she informs the officer to say, by the way, all of us are licensed to carry the officer. Mm -hmm. We do have them on. Tell us how you'd like to do it. Right. You've done everything. You want a legal opinion? You'll need an attorney sure. in the given area. Now, here in Michigan, I strongly recommend, as I did here in the Michigan class, that you belong to your local grassroots gun owner civil rights organization, which here in Michigan is MCRGO, Michigan Coalition of Responsible Gun Owners. The people that got you guys concealed carry right. as shell issue in the first place. Exactly. If you talk to them or just write to them, <clears throat> they have counsel on staff to answer questions like these. Uh, MCRGO uses Steve Dillon. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I've never met the man, but I've certainly read his work and been very impressed by him. The guy is a law professor. 
and a practicing attorney, and he specializes in Michigan gun law. Nice. In my business, this is what they call a clue. When this man talks, you should listen. I believe he will give you the same advice that I do. Generic advice, <clears throat> if you don't know what the rules are, there, there are some states where there's no requirement to notify. There are some states where there's no requirement to notify, but when you're pulled over, a wise officer will have run your license tag before the stop is initiated, and it will have come back in many states from Department of Motor Vehicles where they cross-reference the information that you are stopping a vehicle registered to someone who has a license to carry a gun. You're not required to tell me, as I, the officer, come up to your car. At the same time, if I know you are likely to have a gun, and it turns out you do, and you did not tell me, it goes from law enforcement protocol to simple human nature. Mm -hmm. It tells me that you have kept something from me. Right. And our relationship might not be as friendly, cordial, and forgiving as it might have been otherwise. As a general rule... Well, I have a mission. Exactly. As a general rule, what I recommend is carry the concealed carry permit, whatever it's called in your state, CPL, CHL, CCW, whatever, next to your driver's license. And the two of them to the officer. As a general rule, you have now fulfilled any legal obligation that might have been to notify. Now, uh, some time back, I heard there was a case here in Michigan, and I have no personal knowledge, this is second hand, where the motorist handed the concealed carrier permit and the license to the officer. As things went, as can often happen at the side of a busy road, mm -hmm. the officer became distracted and did not see the carry permit. Later becomes aware that the individual is carrying and decides that since he did not verbally notify him, okay. this must be a failure to notify okay. And I have no idea how or when or if that was adjudicated. Mm. That said, the general rule, if you have handed the concealed carry permit with the driver's license and other items, normally the registration papers for the vehicle and in many jurisdictions proof of insurance, you have fulfilled that obligation. Right. right. And, you know, to, to previous advice, uh, it's, it's a good idea, I think, to make some statement to the officer. I, I do have it on. How would you like to proceed? And maybe that helps to also draw his attention to the fact that you've handed him two plastic laminated cards instead of just one. And, oh, yes. You... Exactly. What, what I recommend is that you not say, I've got a gun. Right. Right. That is seen as a threatening state. You yep. say that to me on a dark and stormy night, I'm, I might say, me too! And it's an action yeah. word. Yep, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> it's a scare word, it's yep. a buzz word, it frightens young rookie policemen who never touched a gun right. until they got to the academy and now they're six weeks out. <laughs> right. So, what I recommend is, if it needs to be verbalized, say, officer, I have a license to carry, I do have it on, tell me what you'd like me to do. Exactly. You have not uttered the scary one-syllable word that begins with a hard syllable mm -hmm. that frightens people. The officer you're speaking to knows exactly what you're talking about. He knows you're not talking about your colostomy bag. <laughs> and he will take it from there. Uh, the other thing you've got to worry about at a roadside stop, you all know what the ambient noise is there, particularly on the highway. The passenger side window may be rolled up. If it's in the dark, if it's in an area where usually every time you've seen a cop pull someone over, it was just the lone officer of the patrol car. You may now be in a jurisdiction with two-person patrol cars, or even in the normal one-car protocol areas. The driver might be the field training officer, and he might have the rookie partner trainee right. with him, or right. vice versa. One will approach the driver's side, one will approach the passenger side. The window's rolled up, and there's all the traffic, and there's the car between him, the brother officer who's at the, the driver's door, and the driver himself. The driver says, officer, I have a license to carry my concealed gun. The guy on the right hears only one gun. cell phone, and things go downhill. Yep. If you said, I'm licensed to carry, I do have it on, tell me how to proceed. Right. What you've done from the beginning, you have been totally upfront with the officer. 
you have explained to him in a way he will understand what's going on. You have not uttered the Any frightening scared word, word yep. Yep. and the officer will tell you where to go from there. Uh, if I got the rare officer who would say, take out the gun and hand it to me, <laughs> I know what this is going to look like to the yeah. officer on the right side of the car who may not have heard that command. And I'd say, officer, I don't want to do anything that looks like I'm pulling a gun on a policeman. Tell, you may take the weapon from my hip, it's a, in a holster on my right side, tell me how to proceed. Yeah. You've begun with deference to his authority and total compliance. When you end, tell me what you want me to do. You've ended with deference to authority and compliance. There has been no threat. Yep. And if you want to say to the officer, I'm a sovereign citizen. <laughs> I pay your Am salary. I being detained? Yep. Yep. I don't wish to comply, comply with you. And I'm turning on my video so I can post this tonight to YouTube. That's right. And Whatever you, happens to you is on you. That's right. And it's you might, not my fault. You can't blame me. And, and mentioning, mentioning that you pay their salary never hurts. Well, <laughs> if you tell me you pay my salary, I'll say, fine, you're the one I need to talk to about a raise. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Good advice. Thank you. Good advice. Um, another question I have. In the past few years, there's been a lot of states have adopted carry permit um, laws that, that didn't previously allow it. Um, some states have made modifications that have uh, given more latitude to, to the ability to issue carry laws. And so there are many shall issue states. Um, with that comes obviously a great increase in the number of Americans who, who make use of that privilege. And we can't help but notice that with that has come an overall reduction in violent crime. Absolutely. Um, and you know, another thing I've noticed personally is that there's popping up on every, uh, I don't want to say street corner, metaphorically on every street corner, is, uh, uh, you know, we will train you. Uh, we will provide training to give you your permit. We will try to provide training to give you tactical uh, experience and, and knowledge and, and things like this. Many training programs uh, are, are very good and are, are very valid and, and offer a lot of, of value to the student. Many are not as valuable. Um, and, and that's just the nature of the beast. You know, you name anything popular, potentially lucrative, and, and that's going to happen. My question is certainly not to you know give me the names of the ones you you'd go you know avoid or anything like that. That's not that's not what we want to do, but. If you are a maybe a new maybe a new gun owner, or maybe someone who's looking to uh, enhance their experience, their understanding, and their education, what what types of questions would you ask um, a potential educator, a potential trainer, uh, to help you make a selection? Is this guy just out to make a quick buck? Is he a diploma mill, for lack of a better term? Uh, where I, you know, I go in, I spend 150 bucks. He gives me a piece of paper at the end of four hours, and I really didn't learn anything. Uh, or, you know, he's he's really going to offer something. So, what? Uh, I would handle it the way I'd handle any other potentially important service that I was retaining. Uh, if I'm going to have somebody give me dental implants, I've got the cancer diagnosis, and I need an oncologist. I'm going to look around and find the best implant guy, I'm going to find the best oncologist, I'm going to check around and get references. And when you're carrying that gun, it's not, okay, what's the quickest way that I can get a piece of paper that says I can carry? Right. It's who can best teach me the rules of the road in a piece of emergency equipment that I'll be using in a life or death situation that involves my family's future and even my family's survival. So. Basically, do it like you would anything else. First, if they won't tell you who is teaching the class, that's a little too generic and McDonald's for me. I'd, I'd like to know who's teaching the class. And I'd like to know the instructor's resume. Okay, uh, in, in law, we call it uh, CV, the curriculum vitae, the course <laughs> of your life, because attorneys just have to use Latin. They right. can't do one syllable, <laughs> one three will work. But you want to take the resume, and you want to take the next step that most people don't. Check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, the conventional slang for a resume is rag sheet. Okay, that's what it looks like. I'll buy it. 
don't take it at face value. Do it like you were the employer who was about to hire this person, which is exactly what you are. Check it out and see if he's been where he says he's been. See if he's done where he's, what he says he's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're employing him. You want to know if he's telling you the truth. If he doesn't check out, you wouldn't hire him to work for you. Right. Why should you hire him to do something that may impact your family's future, your literal survival, your societal survival, and your financial survival? Mm -hmm. Check them out. I, I never have hurt feelings when somebody says, you want to see my CV? Hell, mm -hmm. mine is all over Google. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Check it out, see if they're who they say they are. And the other thing you want to look at is see if their background applies to what you're doing. Um, if, if you, to continue the analogy, if you've been diagnosed with cancer and you're looking for the best oncologist, you probably don't need uh, you know, the, the world's best obstetrician. Right. Right. And you've got a whole lot of guys who are teaching one side of this to people who are on the other side. Are you police? Are you military? Are you about to be sent overseas to fight for your country? Those are three very different sets of circumstances. Military versus police and civilian is a huge difference in the rules of engagement. Right. Police vis-a-vis -vis civilian is to some degree a difference in rules of engagement. Uh, certainly at the lower use of force sure, levels. Sure. And you want to see, okay, this guy may be great at what he does. I need someone who can teach me to do what I am going to do with this. Do you want the guy who can teach you how to win a match? There, there are guys who are specialists in that mm -hmm. and are exquisite. Do I want a guy who can teach me how to conceal this gun? Might be an entirely different set of specialties. Do I want someone who will teach me how to get through this and handle the aftermath? For a different set of specialties. So basically, the onus is on you. If you pick the wrong instructor, it's less because the instructor wasn't what you wanted if you haven't done your homework. If you haven't done your homework, the onus is on you. You picked the right man for the wrong job, or vice versa. So, one last question, if you don't mind. Sure. You are, from at least my perspective and my perception, you seem like the proverbial one-armed paper hanger. <laughs> you uh, you shoot you shoot lots of, of matches. I'm sure you shoot whenever you're able, um, schedule-wise. You not as many as the last few years. <laughs> you're yeah. you're still a very prolific writer. You have uh, an internet blog, which I, I read, by the way, religiously. I check in at least a couple times a week. What's he has he posted anything in the last day or two? <laughs> Um, Backwoodshome.com slash blog slash Masada you Absolutely, and I will provide that information below this, this video as well. Um, so, you know, and then there's Mag 20, Mag 40, Mag 80, <laughs> none of which are as easy as those names imply, and the names don't really make them sound that terribly easy. The, the names are the uh, the cumulative hours that are spent. Exactly. By, by the time exactly. you hit Mag 160, you spent 160 hours with us. So, given all that, do you have spare time ever? And <laughs> and and what what do you like to do in your spare time? And I'm just curious, as you know, as, as an individual, you know, I, I don't see you as a golfer. <laughs> I don't see you as a would-be Olympic swimmer. But <laughs> uh, that they don't have Olympic sinking or. And I, I'm sorry for that mental image. <laughs> But, so what, what do you like to do in the downtime? Well, the beauty of it is my work is something that I do enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I never knew who first said it. Uh, the first guy I heard it from was Edna Wiki, uh, one of the great police trainers, a police chief, survivor of six shootouts. Ed said, if you enjoy what you do for a living, you never actually have to work a day in your life. Yeah. And I think I'm living proof of that. Uh, one reason I'm not retired is I figured, what would I do if I retired? I enjoy shooting, I enjoy writing, I frankly enjoy teaching. Mm -hmm. And if I was retired, I'd probably travel around the country, visit small friends, maybe make some new friends, maybe help somebody learn to shoot, maybe help out somebody who's in trouble in court, maybe write something. 
trying to figure it down. So Wait a minute, that. that sounds like your life today, doesn't it? So by that standard, I'm already retired. Right, right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.